You now tuned into Difficult People Chronicles. I'm seriously focused, Johnny, SF Johnny. Today's episode is called The Message. The rat is going for the cheese. I sat back the other day and, you know, I was just thinking about some things and how things come to me. When I was younger, I remember telling two people, two different people in different times of my life. One person, I told them that their mother was going to be sick and it's because the person is not getting a checkup and the sickness is really, really, really bad. This person was so selfish that they kept pointing the finger to themselves like, oh, you know, this happened to me. I had a bad cold or I had a pain in my shoulder. And just, and then I was just like, yo, can you think outside the box? It's not about you. It's not about you. And then there was another person where I, I remember going away on vacation and it seemed like once I left the New York area, like say I went down south or I went overseas, wherever I went, I would go into these deep, like a deep sleep or maybe about to wake up or, you know, half sleep, half awake, but my eyes is not open. And then all of a sudden I could see like I'm watching a movie where I could see a scene play out. So at the time I went away with this other person and... I said to this person, because this person was always in the streets, always and always into some kind of trouble. And I said to them, look, you better be real careful because I woke up and I remember call that, calling out to the person. And when the person came in the room, they was like, what's up? And I said, look, I saw two people. I said, you, you have two friends that are brown skin or something. And then one has like a beard and a mustache, well trimmed, well put together. And... Then there's this female and she is, I see her pointing somewhere like she wants you to do something. So she's telling you to go over there. I said, if you go, cause you're going to go for whatever she's offering. And if you go, something bad is going to happen. So he was like, every time you think about me or something, something, it's always bad. And he said, why is that? And I said, it's what comes to me. I can't stop it and I can't change it. It just happens. And it's always when I go away from, you know, New York or whatever. But then I realized that I had a lot of negative energy when I was in New York, you know, of certain people that I was around at the time. So things didn't come to me like that all the time. You know, it was always jumbled up dreams and stuff. But This time, we was away, and it came clear as day, and it's like I was sitting down watching the movie. And I was just like, it's going to be really bad, like really, really bad. So I said, whoever it is, they trying to set you up. And these two people, they are not going to get caught. You are, if you go through whatever they want you to do. So sometime after, we stopped talking, because, you know, he's a fool. And I had another dream behind that. But at the time, we wasn't talking. And the dream was he crossed a bridge to get to these same two people. And I described them to the T to him, the first dream. But he went to these people and it didn't it didn't go well. And then eventually I found out he got arrested for whatever. Yep. (laughs) Now I'm older, wiser, knowledgeable, you know, and my circle of people is the same they they're searching for peace and they no longer in the streets doing craziness like that you know they want something more in their life meaningful not that craziness so it's important I'm telling you it's important that when you dreams dreams and you have a bad dream you go to God in prayer so God could change the narrative because the devil will have you believing that something else is going down and if you don't pray against it It's almost like you're agreeing with it, okay? So you go to God in prayer, even if whatever I'm telling you on this podcast pertains to you, go to God in prayer, but pray against that dream, okay? So this episode is called, The Rat is Going for the Cheese. Now in the last episode, the last episode, it was the message, and it basically, it was like, um, don't be surprised, because, you know, the enemies are going to be fighting amongst each other. (laughs) So, in this episode, the enemy symbolizes rats, okay? These rats, let's say, I'm giving you an example, say it's three rats. Three rats is going for the cheese, I'm just saying, okay? Now, what happens is, well, they plan to go for the cheese, so 
two go for the cheese, but one of them stands back, right? And that one that stands back, it wants to see what happens. So the two that goes for the cheese, they get caught. And then the one that stands back says, I'm not going for the cheese. So the two that went for the cheese, at that point in time, you will know these rats. Why? Because they got caught in the trap. But that one that stood back, that's the one you don't know. So there's one on the, on the loose. Now, back to the message. The one rat that's on the loose is trying to figure out ways to get to that cheese. Because rats is not good. Okay, And this cheese symbolizes a benefit to whomever. They want what's for you. So let's change the cheese and say the cheese is a pot of gold or money or an inheritance or marriage to your ordained um, husband or wife. They want that. They want that. Or it could be even a house or car. They want that. They want that. When I was younger, let's just talk about the description of a rat. When I was younger, we lived in a basement when I was younger at one time we had mice now we call mice and rats the same thing even though rats is big in nature and they look they could be looking like huge animals monsters and they will devour people but we had the small ones which was mice we weren't worldly rich but we wasn't broke okay we were a West Indian family. Anyway, thinking about things back then, we had mouse traps. Anything went into these traps, okay? Because we were West Indian, what went into these traps was whatever we had in the house. Cheese, hard dough bread, bun, chicken, peanut butter, anything. When we saw mice, we knew it was time to go through everything. Corn flakes, sugar, rice, anything that was dry packaged and clean like our life depended on it maybe that's why I clean so much now like I say all the time there was always a story that was that became the the method to my madness my philosophy is no one can clean my house like me anyway rats true through walls they won't stop at anything in order to get whatever they want they are picky when it comes to food and when I say picky Meaning if you have a group of rats, like I just explained to you in the beginning, some of the rats will go for the cheese and get caught. And there's going to be a few of them that's going to see, okay, that's not going to work. Let's try something else. (laughs) And they're going to go eat other things because they don't want to get caught and die and kill. And that's how they become on the run. Yep. The only way to stop them is to either get them caught in a trap or kill them by some other method. Like they, they had the, the pellets where they would eat the pellets and then they go outside, search for water, and they just die outside somewhere. These rats, mice, whatever you want to call them, they can survive under crucial circumstances. And their mission is a meal. So when it comes to humans, a meal means whatever they see as a benefit to them. Okay. Now, humans, enemies, we call them these enemies rats. They're afraid of being exposed and being caught. So remember that. Now, there's two things I want to say on a spiritual level. Don't be scared of them, meaning your enemies. Don't be scared to take a risk that's going to benefit you to get to the next level. Because these enemies that's trying to go after whatever you going after or whatever's for you, they're going to try to uh, stop your inspiration, you know, try to make you get depressed or not even push forward so they could go after what you're going after. And that's something for you as far as your growth and your, your own spiritual journey. Now, in the Bible, rats are mentioned as a plague that was sent to Egypt as punishment for not following God's commandments. The rat meaning in context suggests that creatures is a symbol of death okay now in genesis 129 english standard version it states and god said behold i have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food so that means everything is supposed to be good for you except it doesn't talk about those rodents it doesn't talk about those rats so they're not for you Isaiah 66, 17 states, those who sanctify and purify themselves go into the gardens following one in the midst, eating pig's flesh and abomination and mice shall come to an end 
together, declares the Lord. So pigs and mice. Then in Leviticus 11.29, it says, And these are unclean to you among the swarming things that swarm on the ground, the mole rat, the mouse, the great lizard, and of any kind. So they unclean. In many religions... Like I said, the dev the 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 rat symbolizes devil, temptation, um, deceiving people, hate, and I, like I always say, the enemy can be the one closest to you. So they can also be a rat. Now we always say things like when we call a person a rat, that means they talk a lot. These people will talk themselves out of a situation and lie on you putting you in a situation or tell all your business and tell none of theirs Mm -hmm. they will even tell on you to get some kind of benefit for themselves what came to me is that this rat is gonna tell something and add to it this rat is trying to accomplish something because they broke broke meaning that whatever they trying to tell is tied to their next meal (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yep. When when I was talking to one of my cousins and, and I was telling her about, you know, the whole rat thing. And the one thing she said to me was poverty. And I said, you know, I forgot. I didn't even think about that. It also means that, yep, this person is in poverty, meaning they can't even, they can't afford their next meal. So they, they, they trying to figure out where they're going to steal from or who they got to throw under the bus, who they got to lie on, who they got to damage to get. Because this is their meal, you know. Whatever you're doing is their meal ticket, and they want to go after that. These are the things I ask you. Are you in a hard place in your life, or did you do something that the enemies feel they can benefit off of? And sometimes it could also be blackmail. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. It could be that this rat is going to go for the cheese to try to blackmail somebody and try to, because they feel that if they don't, um, how should I say it? A rat will blackmail a person to keep that person in position. So I don't give advice, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. When I was younger, and this is something quick, I lived next door to the most nosiest neighbors in, on this earth. Like my ex-neighbors was nosy, like everything. And one was... She was an old, old woman, up in age. I think I told y'all about this. And then there was her tenant. So at the time, I was like, how old was I? I was probably in my early 20s. And my neighbor, he was the tenant. He was like, I would say his 50s. And then the lady who owned the house, she was like in her, she was still, mm, she retired. So she was probably 60s, 70s. They were always in my business, always in my business. To a point where this woman lived next door and she would sit there and be like, oh, we're going to have a family meeting because Johnny is walking the streets and eating pizza. I'll never forget that in my life. And it got to the point where I would tell my friends and then I just started, you know, telling the woman off because she wouldn't mind her business. She would not mind. And I didn't I didn't understand what was so wrong with me eating pizza and walking like I would walk home from work or wherever, grab a pizza And I would just walk and eat my pizza until I got in the house. Because then I had to get dressed and go to work or go somewhere or do something. But regardless of what, that was my business. So my mother didn't pay no no real attention to her. And at the time, we didn't know much about spiritual warfare like that. (laughs) My stepfather, I don't even think he even cared. I think he was just into the TV. And he just thought it was entertaining. But the, the, the tenant that lived there, the guy, he was the most weirdest person in the world. To the point where one time he was like, oh, I'm going to tell your mother that you left out at a certain time to go to a club and you didn't come back till like three in the morning or whatever, whatever. So what I do, I know I had a curfew. I went to my mother and told. <laughs> And then he got upset. He got upset because he wanted to be the one to tell and get me in trouble. Okay. I don't know what benefit he got from that. You know, I mean, he is the description of a rat. He's also the description of a monitoring spirit. And the reason why is because years later, even when we moved, he was trying to figure out uh, where we moved to and how I was doing and all of that. And I was just like, yo, he a psychopath. But I say he was a rat. I could say that now. So if a person is being blackmailed, the way to escape that is just tell on yourself. 
because if not just you know holding a person in bondage and trying to manipulate them is if you have something over them or you have that means to control them and that means to control them was be would be for them to know something about you that you don't want to get out tell them yourself it might not be as bad as you think and then you can sleep peaceful at night and then this person will be so upset because whatever they had over you was their next meal ticket and they wanted you to fold they wanted you to come towards them they wanted to use you they wanted everything I did a lot of those I sat there and I would tell I sat down one day I said ma I gotta tell you something and I just told her everything she said what 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 it was just like what you did what what yep mm -hmm. and I wasn't a bad kid I just did things I would take her car and I would go to the club and then I would come home and go to school and get A's and B's and yeah it wasn't the thing to do but I did it but he always was like oh I'm gonna tell your mother and it was just like yo don't you have kids can't you mind your business I see why you not married I see why you single I see why you are so annoying you don't have nothing else to do yeah I told on myself mm -hmm. oh it, it felt so good I and I think that's when my relationship with my mother was it became more closer than ever because even though I told her you know she would lecture me and then say certain things to me to make me really think about the things I was doing and how things could have went left and all this other stuff and then I just stopped you know I just stopped doing certain things <laughs> but then I got older and, I, and then I kind of the whole going to the club faded away then I was more into traveling yep but that's just a message for you all you know, you need to um, pay attention to the warning signs. Be sober minded. The thing that bothers me a lot of times is that people always let the enemy know what the next move is. You don't let your and yeah, whew, that just came to me. Stop letting your enemy know what your next move is. Keep that inside your brain. Because sometimes when you keep silent, you start to see more than you expected. And you might see that somebody you would never expect is an enemy but whoever that enemy is that rat there they going for that cheese so whatever you going for they trying to go for it too and pay attention to some of the words they use you know like when people say things like oh that can't be me nobody asked you <laughs> nobody asked you if it could be you that it couldn't be you or whatever nobody asked you you know pay attention to certain things because sometimes these little words people will try to talk you out of situations just so they could go for it I had that too I remember I'm gonna tell y'all something real quick before I get off I remember going to Vegas I ain't gonna lie and I said oh I want to play that slot machine and it was like I guess it was the game of life I don't know what it was it was some slot machine and I was younger and I said oh I want to play that slot machine but I never did and one of the girls at the time she was a friend of mine and she went and played that same slot machine and she came out with a whole heap of money and I was tight because you know the whole time I was gonna go to the slot machine she was rushing me saying oh let's go here let's do that to meet up with these people and all this other stuff and I just wanted to just pull a lever pop my coins in and pull a lever and then I said all right cool I'll come back later walked off this stupid nympho when people were asleep in the wee hours of the morning crawled out of her bed went down to that slot machine and bingo and she walked away I guess with like five hundred dollars and I was sick and I said to myself you know what I couldn't get mad at nobody else but myself but I was just like that was a learned lesson because people will talk you out of things so they could go after what's for you yep you want to know one thing how to kill a rat starve them that means whatever you're going after, keep your mouth shut. Whatever you're trying to do, keep your mouth shut. Starve them. But if they blackmailing you, tell on yourself. <laughs> you see how that goes? Stay blessed. Have a blessed one. Check me out on YouTube. Like, subscribe, click the notification. Check out my store. And uh, for one-on-one -on -one session, go to my website, seriouslyfocusedjohnny.com for suggested topics. Email me and put in the subject box topic. Stay prayed up. Later.